Good morning and welcome back to another session with the Fulbright Foreign Student Program. Uh, my name is Sahar Kamkoum and I'm the exchange program at Amity's Tunisia. And today I'm here with Emira, our Education USA uh, for Libya. Uh, and we are going to talk about a, like a, a topic that we promised that we will back, we'll be back at and that's personal statement. Uh, so um, this is very important to your application and like to your Fulbright application. So I would encourage you to pay attention and ask any questions you have about uh, the personal statement. And also uh, you can ask any other questions you have about the applications. So um, to start, uh, before we go with the personal statement, I just want to have to run a quick overview about the program. So here we're talking about the Fulbright Foreign Student Program. My name is Fulbright Atal al Ajnabi. So this is uh, a program that offers the opportunity for Libyans who are interested in pursuing a master's degree in the USA. Uh, so if you are interested and you're applying or start, already start your application, so uh, this program offers the a fund full funds for up to two years for a master's degree uh, so it's fully funded and it's a u.s department of state program uh, of course this program uh, comes with requirements uh, we want to see that you are a libyan resident of libya when you apply for the program you have at least uh, the bachelor degree or the equivalence of a bachelor degree uh, we also want to see that you have uh, good skills in when it comes to uh, English and that you have good academic grades as well. Um, we want also to detect through your application and hopefully through the interview that you are interested in this program and not only the academic part, but also the cultural part, the exchange, uh, because when you go to the US, uh, you're not only studying, but also there is a cultural part when you learn about the USA and its culture and also help Americans to learn about Libya and uh, the culture of Libya. Uh, of course, uh, we want you to understand that US citizens uh, or green card holder are not eligible to apply for this program. Uh, so these are pretty much the requirements we are now recruiting and the deadline is May uh, 1st, uh, 2021. And now we are going to move to the personal statement. Next slide, please, Amira. Great. So, um, so Amira will be leading this session, uh, but I just wanted to say one important thing about personal statement. It's very important for your application, as I said in the beginning. And we do read them. We care a lot about the personal statement and also the study objectives. And like, believe me when I say, sometimes students, they get disqualified because their personal statement are not strong enough. So please pay attention to every part that Amira will be um, going through and uh, like uh, explaining. Uh, I believe Amira will explain what is personal statement and also like how, what is the structure, what to put in there, what to avoid. So pay attention and hopefully this session will help you understand how to work on your personal statement and make it strong. So this is a screenshot from the online application. Uh, and uh, when you go on your online application, uh, there is a part uh, where, uh, of course, prior to working on your personal statement, you have to agree on the plagiarism agreement. And we had already a session about that. So I encourage you to go back and watch the session about plagiarism prior to starting your essays. And even if you started your essays and did not submit yet, go ahead and rewatch the session about plagiarism. Uh, and you can always go back and edit or, uh, you know, uh, adjust your essays. Uh, so when you go under uh, study plans, that's where you find uh, that's where you find uh, the section for the personal statement, the study objectives, and the writing sample. Writing sample is optional, um, but you are welcome to uh, also add uh, something like uh, add the writing sample if you would like to. Uh, so now I'll give the floor to Emira. Uh, pay attention and ask your questions. 
Thank you so much, Sahar, and thank you everyone for joining this session. Uh, you're gonna get, as, a, as Sahar said, you're gonna get different tools on how to craft a, an effective personal statement in the beginning of the session. And then you'll get more tools on how to write an effective CV. Okay, so if you have any questions, please type them down on our Facebook page and we'll get back to them at the end of the session. So again, thank you so much, Sahar, for having me today. And let's start with the outline of the uh, um, personal statement. So what are we going to learn together? The first thing you will know, what is a personal statement? And then the second thing you will see, um, what are the brainstorming topics that you have to focus on? We will move later to the personal statement structure and then the do's and the don'ts, what to do and what, what to avoid. And at the end, um, we will tackle some frequently asked questions about the personal statement. So stay tuned. Okay. So the first thing that we will start with, as I said, is what is a personal statement? So. A personal statement is a special type of essay in which you should share something about who you are, which means something that cannot be found in your resume or in your transcripts as you demonstrate that you are a good fit for a particular program. Example, the Fulbright program. So by summing up the specific skills and experience that make you perfect for the program, you will be able to prove your suitability and convince the admission officers to read on. OK, so in fact, a well written personal statement can mean the difference between standing out from the crowd and your application being rejected. So you have to take that into consideration. So what is a personal statement? So uh, a personal statement, again, it is a picture. So here, I don't mean an image, but a picture, which means it should paint a picture for the program to understand who you are and what you bring to the table. So your personal statement should produce a picture of you as a person, as a student, as a potential program winner, let's say. Number two, it is an invitation. So here, the reader must be invited to get to know you personally. So make your reader welcome. Number three, it's a story. This is the most important part of the personal statement. But let's say it is a more precisely your story. So use a story where you are at the center of the action. Put the reader in your shoes. Um, talk about something that happened for you and you learned from it, uh, or it changed you maybe. So remember, stories don't just happen, but you make them. So don't make the mistake of um, writing, of trying to guess what the committee is looking for. No, and don't try it, uh, what you think they want to hear, okay? Now, the personal statement is not, uh, number one, is not a resume. So the CV or the resume demonstrates your skills and strengths, true. So don't list your educational and professional experiences here. In the personal statement, try to say why you want to go to apply for a particular program, why you want to be part of the Fulbright, and why you want to study one particular subject. If you want to study business, if you want to study marketing, political sciences, why that specific major? Number two, the personal statement is not a sob story. So you, you cannot let something bad that happened to you become an excuse. You don't want to rely on it and you don't want the application committee to think you are trying um, to gain pity. So it's important that you remain professional. So if you have overcome a struggle or a tragedy and it has influenced you or changed you, of course you can talk about it. However, However, try to put a positive spin on it when possible. Talk about how this experience made you who you are today. And number three, the personal statement is not a justification for the program. So a justification uh, for why you should be admitted to a particular program. It is an opportunity to introduce yourself to the selection committee without them physically meeting you. So the personal statement is supposed to be, uh, let's say, a meaningful self-reflection. You don't have to justify, but be who you are, okay? And choose a good story. Now, before starting crafting your personal statement, you have uh, to apply this ABC rule. So try to apply the ABC throughout your personal statement. What do I mean by the ABC? So the A stands for activity. So what have you done? 
what is the, your activity of interest? So what is this? Number one, then the B stands for the benefit. Now talking about activity, what skills it has given you? What did you learn from this activity? And how did it inspire you? And number three, the C stands for the course. So how these skills relate to the program, always link your personal story to the program you are applying to. Don't be very general. Don't just talk about a story and forget about the program. There should be a link. So that's the secret of the personal statement, or let's say an effective personal statement. Okay, now let's move on to point number two, brainstorming topics. Uh, so when it comes to brainstorming topics, you can choose one from the list or you can come up with another topic. So again, in this session, I'm just trying to help you um, to, uh, to start writing your personal statement. So one of the topics could be what were defining moments in your life? So how did these moments in your life change you? What did you learn from it? And how has it shaped your future plans? Um, some topics might include maybe beginning a new business or losing a loved one, um, taking a trip, starting a new job, or even leaving an old one. So this is how you start brainstorming. Number two, it could be about a problem you solved. Describe a problem you have solved or a problem you would like to solve. It can be an intellectual challenge. It can be a research, anything that is of a personal importance. So explain its significance to you and what steps you took or planning to take um, to identify a solution. Number three, it could be reasons for choosing um, this program. So this opportunity become Example, you want to become um, a more globally engaged citizen. Maybe you want to know more about uh, people and cultures. Maybe you want to gain exposure to other research or educational systems or teaching methods. So, so choose something. Or it could be experiences or accomplishments. So, so describe and evaluate one experience that significantly influenced your academic interests. The experience might be um, a high school course or a job or a relationship or an extracurricular activity. So be sure to explain how this experience led to your setting the goals you now have for yourself and why you think the Fulbright will help you to reach those goals. Again, also it could be a professional or um, um, an academic goal. So you can write about how the job or or, or uh, how, how, how the program you are applying for fits into your dreams for the future. And you can consider selecting uh, a specific goal uh, or, or a specific goal or course can help you achieve this. So hit the big three, as I say. So don't forget when you're writing a personal statement, talk about the story, talk about the involvement, how are you involved in the story and talk about the connection. Try to connect, try to link to the program. Okay, now. We're moving to the structure. So here I prepared um, a sample of a structure for the personal statement, but make sure that you can come up with your own structure. So here, again, I'm just trying to help you. If you didn't start crafting your personal statement yet, you can follow the structure you can change a little bit. So this is not the one and only one. So I just wanna make sure. So when I say structure, I wanna see an introduction. I wanna see body paragraphs and I wanna see conclusion. So this is a well-organized structure. And again, you can follow this one or you can come up with another one, but it just should be organized. Now, for the, for the introduction, uh, let me divide it into three parts. So part number one, start with the story, as I said. So the best way to get the attention of the admissions team is to start with a gripping story from a moment that changed um, your life. Try to keep their attention longer so they want to learn more about you. Then include little details. Start adding small details. You can transform your introduction into a gripping start for your essay to really um, take it to the next level. So don't give all of the details in the introduction, but few of them. Just show them where you're going to talk about. And then end it with the ultimate goal. Tell the admissions team where you have been, where you are, 
and where you're going. So in the final sentence of the introduction, add a note about what the long term goal. OK, so they have to understand what are you going to talk about in the introduction briefly. Don't make it so long. Then moving to the body paragraph, so, so the most important part of the personal statement. So number one, you will notice that the body paragraphs here have um, elements that the admission team is looking to learn um, about you. So let's take a closer look at those body paragraphs. Number one, I'm going to call it back to the beginning. So after your killer introduction, you will ideally want to take the admissions team back to where and when your passion for career X or Y or Z started and grew. So in the intro, we gave small details. Now you have to give more detail. So when did this um, interest start? So in your first paragraph, uh, you want to bring uh, the admission team on a journey through the most important stages from your story. You can start sharing the incident that had a profound impact along the way. Then we have the confirmation of your passion. Your second body paragraph, should show the admissions team that, yes, this is the career for you. Show them proof that this is the path meant for you. This paragraph should be heavy on storytelling, detailing moments that made you think, this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life, okay? And then for the third paragraph, it's the, the current self um, and the future aspirations. In your third paragraph, you want to share where you are today, what your next steps are, and what your future goals look like. So areas to discuss include why you wanna pursue this program or the specific field or the specific major and why it's a good fit for you. And also, how will the Fulbright achieve um, your ultimate career goal? And what is the ultimate career goal? Try to be as specific as you can. This third paragraph will allow your essay now to flow seamlessly into your conclusion. Now we will move to the conclusion. So what to mention here, um, when, um, so he, the first part is to recap where you have been. Now, um, throughout your essay, you have shared experiences, skills and knowledge that have driven you toward who you are today. So in your conclusion, remind them about how all those different elements work in combination to make you a unique candidate for the program. Two, it recaps where you are. You are at a crucial junction between the past and the future. And the Fulbright or the program you are applying to, let me call it, it's a bridge, okay? So recap why this program is an important stepping stone in your career path and how it's a good fit for your personality. And number three, it recaps where you are going. So most importantly, you must tell the admissions team what your long-term career goal is. The more specific you can be, the better, okay? For example, Rather than just um, recapping that you want to become a doctor, this is just an example, you can share um, additional sub goals, such as wanted to be a doctor uh, who works in low income inner city hospitals since you volunteered at those types of facilities before. OK, so this is special, but I want to become an engineer here or I want to become a doctor, this is not enough. Okay, so try to be specific and try to be special. Now, after getting an overview of the personal statement structure, let's move on to the fourth uh, main point, which is the do's. What to do or what to include in the personal statement, how to make it a strong one. Number one, play to your strengths. Remember that you want to stand out from the crowd, as I said in the beginning. So ensure you play on your key strengths and achievements. So make yourself stand out, show personality, show enthusiasm alongside um, examples of your passions and interests and so on, okay? Number two, proofread, proofread and proofread. And I mean it because your personal statement should not have, have errors. This is a sample of your writing and it should be a strong reflection of your written um, communication skills. 
So you can edit extensively. You have to make sure uh, to remove tracked changes if someone is helping you. Ensure that your grammar is correct and that your spelling is correct. And you can get your friends or family members or teacher or even your advisor help you with that, okay? Now, point number three, make, your, make sure that your personal statement is about you. So we talked about that. And I wanna talk about that again, because this is the key element of the personal statement. Keep the focus on you with any topic you choose, because focusing too much on a family member or a family history or a social issue or stories about others is a very common mistake. If you tell a moving and interesting story, it will not be um, a successful personal statement if it doesn't allow them to get to know you. So your goal should be to educate the admissions committee about you and not someone else. Use concrete examples from your life experience to support your accomplishments and distinguish yourself um, from other applicants, okay? And point number four, respect words limits. So admission team has to read thousands of personal statements every year. So don't try, don't go there and give them like extra homework, okay? They won't agree that you're worth more of their time than other applicants. So, so keep your personal statement within the word limits, respect the rules. And I'm pretty sure that Sahara will remind you here about Thank the you, words. Amira. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. Yeah. Um, well, regarding the word limits, I just want to remind the students that it is the minimum of 300 words the maximum is 600 words. There you go. Okay, so um, thank you, Sahar, so thank you, Sahar, for mentioning that now. So of course, students do not make it more complex than it is. They simply uh, want a well-written essay that helps them learn about you, as simple as that. So be concise and organize your thoughts, so, okay. Now, moving to the don'ts. So don't do, avoid these things, so, number one, don't use irrelevant personal facts. Before you write um, about playing basketball or um, a school trip that you went on in your seventh grade, ask yourself, so what, okay? Does it make a useful contribution and help ex explain why you should be given a place on this program? Then don't exaggerate. If you do, you may get cut out of the interview when asked to elaborate on an interesting achievement, okay? So be careful with that. Number three, don't leave it to the last minute, okay? You have to be um, professional, you have to be uh, punctual, and your personal statement will seem rushed and important information could be left out if you write in the last minute. Number four, don't use cliche. So what is a cliche? It's a um, a tired phrase or word that is overused and that lows its impact, okay? So cliches are what you write when you don't have the energy or the aspiration to think of a new way to express an idea. So you probably wouldn't be the first person um, to use the word uh, passionate, okay? So explain your interests and avoid those like common um, lines like, I, I have a passion for chemistry or I love chemistry. Use your own words. So these are what we call cliche. Now, the last part of our uh, personal statement before moving to the CV is the frequently asked questions. So here I collected some of the uh, main questions that usually students ask about the personal statement. So the first question says, I have done lo loads of extracurricular activities. Should I mention them to make it sound good, to make my personal statement sound good? There's no point doing extra things just to try um, and make yourself look good to, um, uh, to uh, the program uh, um, committee. So you won't enjoy it and it probably won't help much either. So if you do want to do something to boost your application, you can read the relevant books or do work experience related to the subject instead, okay? So that they don't want to hear about your activities in the high school. So again, don't use irrelevant facts. Uh, question number two, what do I do if I have no work experience? 
So referencing work experience in your personal statement um, depends on the subject that you intend to study. Some subjects, they only require that you demonstrate knowledge that could be um, through reading or researching. So that's a plus. If you did research or if you volunteered, you can add that to your personal statement. Number three, how many paragraphs should it be? So a well-structured personal statement um, will be broken up into five, six paragraphs, and it should be easy to read, okay? So this is not the final rule again, but it should be a well-structured one. The next question, can I use bullet points? So it is best to avoid uh, bullet points. You can make good use of words like um, includes or uh, verb forms like ranges from. So this is better than using uh, bullet points, okay? And the last question, I'm pretty sure that Sahar also received this a lot. I'm applying for the second time. Can I use the, pers the same personal statement as last year? And I personally received this question too. So you'll probably have new achievements or interests to talk about. So your personal statement should be updated. It can help you think about maybe your life with more focus and maybe even change your ideas about the future. So remember the goal, grab the reader's interest and make them want to meet you for the interview. Thank you, Emira. Um, and I also want to add about that last question because we receive it every single year. Uh, students who applied previous, in the previous year and they are applying again, uh, we, we want you, like Emira said, we want you to work again on your essays. Of course, you can use parts of your essays if it's like an example or a detail that you think it's very important and it's crucial for you to like include that detail that you already talked about in the previous essay, that's fine. But don't just copy and paste the same essay. Great, thank you so much, Amina. That was very helpful. And I am sure that um, the students uh, and uh, who, the students who are watching us now and will watch us later, uh, will have a better understanding of the structure and what to include and what not to include. Because like you said, um, there are like common mistakes that students cannot avoid unless they know them. <laughs> so, um, and I believe in this session, we pointed out the things that you should be aware of to have like, to succeed and have a strong personal statement. And again, I want you to be aware that personal statements are very important in your application and you might get disqualified if your personal statement is not strong enough. Great, so um, now we will move to the second part of the presentation. And here we are going to talk about the CV and how to write a CV. Uh, so it's one of the requirements to include a CV, an updated version of your CV. And now with Emira, we will go through uh, the different parts of the CV, what to include, the, the outline and all of that. So uh, I just want to share this screenshot with you. This is from the online application. So uh, the CV should go under academic and professional information. When you go there, uh, they will ask you to um, add a CV uh, to your application. You have a number uh, of instructions, uh, what, to, uh, what to like put in your resume or CV and what to include, what are the important things that we want to see. So please read the instructions carefully and you will find where to upload your, up, your CV and that should be uh, a PDF file. Uh, you just click choose file and then you upload it. Uh, of course, if you are facing any troubles, you can always um, reach out to us via email or share a screenshot. Maybe we can help, maybe uh, we can give you like a plan B. So um, again, I want you to always read instructions on the application because they help you a lot uh, to understand what you should include, what you should be talking about. Or sometimes students, they get confused. They feel like the parts, they look alike and they feel like they are repeating themselves. The instructions will help you to understand what exactly you should include in this part. Great. So now I'll turn it over to Emira again. Uh, to talk about CV and hopefully after the session you will have a better understanding of what is an American English version CV and how to update your CV and so pay attention and Emira, the floor is yours. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so um, before we turn over to the CV, this is a reminder for everyone who's watching us. Welcome again, and feel free to type your questions um, on our Facebook page, and we will make sure to bring them up at the end um, of the presentation. So this is your chance, this is your opportunity to ask your questions, any questions related to the Fulbright to Sahar, uh, the exchange uh, programs manager with us. And if you have any other questions uh, about the personal statement or the CV, here I am. So this is our outline for the second part of the presentation. So we're going to see the difference between what is a CV and what is a resume. Then there is a small part, what is called a CV quiz, having fun, you know. Then number three, what to include and what not to include in the CV. Then we have uh, CV um, samples. We'll see some of the CV samples. Number six, we'll go uh, over the five steps to a successful CV. And we will um, end it up with how to, what are the elements that you have to include uh, if you don't have a work experience in your CV. Okay, now, what is a CV and what is a resume? So the resume um, is one, well, so usually both of them are a little bit similar, but the resume is one or two page summary of your education, skills, and experience. It is brief, it is shorter than the CV, and um, if you have, let's say, over 15 years of experience, that could be two pages. But as a college student, you usually stick to one page, okay? But when it comes to the CV, it is more detailed, it is longer, and it is a document that you use for academic purposes. So um, the US um, academic CV, it should um, include or outline um, every detail of your uh, scholarly career. There is no need to include your photo or your salary history or the reason you left your previous position um, or references in the CV. So it, the CV, it is more for academics. It, it shows the academic experiences and it is very similar again to the resume, but it lists the achievements and not only the tasks. So, okay, now, Let's do this quiz together. So um, I prepared some questions for you and uh, you have to answer only with true or false. So, so number one, you should always um, clearly state CV at the top of the page, true or false? It is false, okay. You don't have to do that. You don't have to write CV because they know that you're sending your CV. So we will see later what to include on the top of the CV. So no need to write the word CV anywhere, okay? Question number two, you have to include everything you have done on your CV. Again, it is false. So here, um, why do you have to include all of this information? You will clutter your CV with irrelevant roles and details. Your CV is not the time to, um, to, let's say, to throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. No, this is not the right time to do that. Including every job you have ever had could make it hard for the committee to get to know you. So be specific. Number three, you should highlight your soft skills. True or false? True, okay. So soft skills are the skills you pick up in any um, job or experience and will continue to develop. So here, example, there could be uh, teamwork, it could be problem solving, could be conflict management, time management, but again, be specific. Don't just throw them, but be a little bit specific and relate them to the experience that you had. Number four, all CVs, should follow the same format, true or false. It is false. So um, when it comes to the format, although there are like uh, certain rules to formatting your CV, how you go about presenting your skills is up to you. But think about what the most important information uh, for the committee is and order your document accordingly. And we'll see more tips to later. Okay, number five. It is best to use full sentences and paragraphs uh, throughout your CV, true or false? Actually, it is false. Seeing a CV that's um, packed full um, of text is not a good idea. So one of the key skills um, is being able to pick out key information. So you can display it using bullet points and short sentences. Okay. Now, moving to the next part. 
what to include in a CV. So these are the information that you have to include in your CV. Of course, you have to start with contact details. So, so include your full name, uh, home address, mobile um, number and email address. No need to add your photo and we'll see that later. Number two, we have the education, list and date all previous education, place the most um, recent first and include specific modules only when, where relevant. Number three, we have the work experience. List your work experience um, in reverse date order. So make sure that anything you mention is relevant to the program you are applying for. So example, if you had a work experience um, this year and you had another one, let's say um, last year, you have to, to you have to start with the one in this year. And then you that like you just mentioned example 2020 and then 2018 and then um, 2010. So this is how we do it. Next part, you can mention um, any honors or awards that you had. You can include any awards that you have received that are related to your field and to the program. Again, only use relevant ones. You can also mention um, conferences and trainings. So if you attended a conference only, there won't be a good idea to mention. Only an attendee, mm -mm. But if you participated in this conference, or if you were a guest speaker, that would be a good plus. So add relevant trainings too. You can also mention uh, research experience and publications. So include any publications, including um, um, books or um, book chapters or articles and book reviews and more. Um, include all of the information about each publication. Don't just make it really general, okay? And of course, languages. So languages are good tools and boost your CV. Show, uh, uh, show your professional level um, in the use of languages. So how good are you in the writing? How good are you in speaking? And if you had language courses, you can add that specific level. If example, if you studied um, English and you got a B1, uh, you can add that, like, this is my level, okay? Now, moving to the things that we should not include um, in a CV. So of course, no picture, gender or marital status because the process of choosing candidates should be free from any uh, profiling based on race or gender or age or appearance. So they want to focus on what you have done and what, what you do, okay? The next part, um, your interests. So this is the American version of the CV. So socializing or going to the cinema or reading aren't going to catch the attention of the person who's choosing you. However, Extra clickers help, as I said before. So examples include writing your own blog. Um, if you want to become a journalist, if you are, a, if you are, a, uh, if you want to go and study maybe journalism, okay. And the next part, <laughs> don't use uh, weird font as it is stated here and flashy colors as it is stated here. This is an example. So don't you don't use weird font and flashy colors because. This shows that you are not professional. So many colors also appear to be um, an attempt to distract the one who is reading your CV. So be careful. Next one, don't use unprofessional email addresses. Don't let your Tiger 111 or Sunshine email ruin the opportunity for you. Don't use the email address that you have had uh, since you were a teenager. Stick to a combination of your first and last name and a few numbers if necessary, okay? Also, don't use slang words. Make sure you use clear, appropriate, and professional language. Your words should be appropriate in context and easily understandable. And the last one, don't uh, send your laundry list. What do I mean here is don't include every class or every summer job you have had unless they are relevant to the program or to the um, major that you want to pursue. Okay, so this is a CV sample here. Um, as you can see the one on your left, uh, so this candidate started with academic details and then mentioned the languages. So this is not a good idea to do it this way because you put the languages at the end. And also, as you can see in the work experience, she's using 
paragraphs. She's using paragraphs, okay? So it's better to avoid this type of sample. And this candidate also could go to two pages to mention all of the skills that she has left. But as the second example that we have on the right, it is more organized the structure is better, and she's using bullet points, as you can see here. So the second example, as you can see, is better than the first one, okay? Into details also a little bit when it comes to how to write your work experience. So this is a sample or a successful sample of work experience. Now, what makes it so great? As you can see, it's action verbs packed. What does that mean? So as you can see the verbs here, you have created and maintained instead of uh, writing responsible for creating and maintaining and then using produced. So just choose uh, one structure. Do you want to use nouns? Go ahead. Do you want to use verbs? Uh, use them with like the same tense and go ahead. And also um, its central focus in, in, is the candidate's achievements. So like the candidate above, if you want your CV to impress, Add a key achievement subsection. This is not required, but it's a plus. So then include um, hard numbers, maybe if you work with marketing. Don't just say um, significantly increased sales, but say how much exactly, because you know, numbers pop, okay? Now, five steps to a successful CV. Um, step number one, keep it real. Usually a CV should be no more than two pages. So keep it punchy to the point and save those little details for the interview. Number two, don't leave gaps. Leaving obvious gaps on your CV immediately makes the readers suspicious and they won't appreciate it. So did you do a course, volunteer work, or develop soft skills such as communication, uh, teamwork, or project management? If so, shout about it, okay? Then keep it current. You should keep your CV up to date. Every time something significant happens in your um, career, record it so you don't later forget um, something that could be important to you. The next part is um, tell the truth. Don't lie. Everyone, so I always hear like this word, everyone lies on their CVs, right? No, the last thing you want is to be called to the interview and then lose the chance. Why? For lying. So you also may get caught at the interview when you suddenly cannot answer questions or what you claim to know. And that can be very awkward. And the last point here is make it keyword friendly. What does that mean? Um, if you work, example, for marketing, it's better to use uh, some keyword like uh, um, SEO which is search engine optimization. So if you know any keywords relevant uh, related to your field, it's better to use them. Um, but if you're not sure, have a search online and see what words are commonly mentioned in your field. But don't try many of them. Show that you know them, okay? And the last part uh, in this presentation is how to get a good CV, a catchy CV, if I have no work experience. So let me start mentioning that, as you know, the Fulbright requires work experience, okay, more than internships. But if you, if you want to include, um, I just want to include this slide for anyone who recently graduated, and these are the key points that you can mention in your CV. So number one, you can identify your most impressive qualities. So the first thing to do, therefore, is uh, figure out what you are selling. Make a list of all the things you are good at. Are you maybe uh, on the national team of baseball? That's teamwork and drive. Um, do you, let's say, write a blog? You are creative and you're good at communication, uh, at, sorry, at written communication, okay? So these are the plus. Don't just um, write uh, qualities that you believe in, but show how are these qualities related. Then number two, play up uh, your degree. So degrees are a great source of um, transferable skills. If you wrote um, a dissertation, then you can talk about your research abilities. If you gave many presentations um, as part of your degree, you can claim to have good public speaking skills, okay? So you could also um, mention skills gained through um, group project work or independent organization and stuff like that. Then add relevant um, volunteering experiences. So you want some free advice? Treat your extra clicker activities like jobs. Um, you may have volunteered at a company or um, conducted charity work 
or completed um, uh, mandatory work experience in college, anything that will look good on a CV. It may not have been paid work, but you certainly would have gained some valuable skills doing it. And the last part, include relevant trainings and conferences. So here, you can list any professional organization that you belong to and um, mention if you hold a position on the board of any organization. So that's it for the presentation for today. If you still have any questions, we are here. Thank you so much, Emira. Uh, that was very helpful. Um, so um, as Emira mentioned, uh, the CV is very important and you should stick to like, uh, let us know of the things that you think are supporting your application and they are a plus. Don't just go and mention every single thing you did in the past. Uh, Thank you so much for clarifying that, Amira. Um, uh, while we were presenting, I've seen some questions. Uh, and since we were talking about CV, uh, I just wanted to inform the students that uh, the maximum is two pages for the CV. And of course, it must be in English because this is the questions that we got through the email. Uh, but please don't exceed two pages. Um, and if you have more than two pages, please go read it, go through it again and um, make sure that you only include what is important for you to include in the application. Will support your Fulbright application. Uh, that's very important. So, um, so I want to look at some of the questions that we got. Uh, I, I've seen uh, two or three students asking about recommendation letters. This is, this is like, uh, this is a question that, like, these are questions that we always get about the program. And it's like a, a confusing part for students. And I totally understand. So um, three things you need to know about the recommendation letters. One is that they are online. You don't, we don't uh, interact with your recommenders and you don't have to get the document the documents from them. It's online. You register them through the system. The system will send them uh, credentials and they go online, work on the, on the recommendation letter and submit it. It must be in English and you must have three recommendation letters. The other question was, can I use my same recommendation letters as last year? Uh, the answer is um, you can reach out to the same recommenders. You will have to register them again and um, and they will have to work on the recommendation letters again. They will submit them again. So basically, they can you can reach out to the same recommenders. Uh, but don't think that because last year you had three recommendation letters, they will go automatically to this year's application. Okay, great. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is that. Um, as you know, now we are recruiting for the Fulbright and the deadline is May 1st, 2021. So you still have enough time to uh, work on your essays. And even if you still did not start your application, you still have time. But I would encourage you to start working on your personal statement first. And the first also thing that you should do is reaching out to your recommenders and make sure that you choose them wisely. And, um, we want you to um, understand that your recommenders are very important and your recommendation letters are very important to us and to the university because they will help us learn about who you are as a student in a classroom and understand more things about you. Um, so Amira, is there anything else you want to add about CV or personal statement or maybe an advice for the participants? Okay, so I think uh, this is pretty much it. Um, I have mentioned uh, different details for the participants. If you still have any specific questions or if you need someone maybe uh, to, um, if you need like proofreading with someone else, uh, feel free to uh, share your personal statement with me. I can help with some tips and tricks. Um, you can send me an email as the Education Essay Advisor from Libya. And yeah. Great. 
So um, also, I want you to always go back and watch other live sessions uh, because I see some people were asking about uh, the application and talking more about the program. So this session was specific for personal statement and CV writing, but uh, we will be having more sessions about the program. And here I encourage you to go back and watch the other live session, whether on Education USA Libya or AMIGIS Libya. Uh, you can always go back to the website and read more about the program and check the frequently asked questions because they do help students uh, in guiding like students. Sometimes you're like confused about something that is holding you from submitting your application or completing or moving to the next part. So you can read the frequently asked questions and uh, you are always welcome to reach out to us via email. Send your emails to libya at amidis.org we are very responsive and we will try our best to like um, guide you through if anything is unclear or if you are confused about any part of the application. Uh, again, the deadline is May 1st, 2021. Uh, so good luck to everyone. And, uh, and now I will give back the floor to Amira to walk you through Education USA. And uh, I would encourage you to listen to this part because you will get to have a free service that might help you with actually your Fulbright <laughs> application. So, uh, so here you go. Okay, thank you so much, Sahar. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today. If you still have any more questions, please reach out to Sahar or reach out to me if you have any specific questions about Education USA, of course. So what is Education USA? Who are we? So Education USA, it is um, a US Department of State network. We are almost everywhere. So there are more than 430 international advising centers in more than 170 countries. So here, um, there are um, advisors everywhere who are giving free services like free information um, about uh, all accredited universities in the US. And if you would like to pursue undergrad or graduate degree in the US, you have to reach out to us. So what do we do and how can we help you? We do public info sessions, just like our today's session. If there are different opportunities for international students, or if there are some tips and tricks that we'd like to with the students we do public information sessions on our facebook page also we do some uh, sessions with university representatives and alumni so if you can see on our facebook page sometimes we host some u.s some u.s college representatives to talk about different programs or majors or uh, how to uh, get a successful application and a lot of different topics and you as an international student you can suggest some of the topics we also uh, host some alumni, Libyan alumni, Libyan students who study it in the US and they're back to their country so they can share their experience. And number three, we offer free individual consultations and they are all virtual. So if you'd like to chat with me, if you have specific questions, could be you or your teacher or your parents, again, reach out to me. Um, these are my contact information. We can have um, a Zoom call, we can have WhatsApp call, and I'm here uh, to help you. So where can you find us? This is our, uh, you can type Education USA in Libya on Instagram or on Facebook, you will find us. And this is our official website, the official website of Education USA in general. If you'd like to get more information about our services and the five steps to study in the US, or even to get some of the funding opportunities for international students. So again, these are my contact information. Here's my phone number. Here's my email address. This is the official website. You're so welcome. Thank you so much, Emira. <laughs> so, and also I want to remind you to always to go back and like the Facebook page of Amidis Libya and also follow us for the live sessions and the different opportunities that we share there. Uh, so again, please go back and watch other live sessions, reach out to us if you have any questions. I just want to take a moment and answer one question that I saw in the chat box from Ahmed. Um, he is, um, he is a freelancer, but um, he has it like the the freelancing he has is not related to his IT IT studies or experience. So I wanted to let to uh, like inform or explain to Ahmed that actually you can highlight this work experience. It's preferred uh, to see it linked to your field of study, but sometimes you do something not very linked, but you learn you learn skills or you work on other skills 
that can make you a good fit for the program or can make you like a strong candidate for the program. So please do include the freelancing. And um, that's maybe something that you can talk about uh, in your personal statement, but know how to relate it to the program, the measure that you are requesting and why applying in the first place. Um, so I hope I un like I answered your question, Ahmed, and that this gives you a better understanding of what to include. Good luck to everyone for your applications. Uh, have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye bye.